comedies, man. Remember those? They're like black and white films for today's generation. They don't make comedies anymore, at least not like they used to. Sure, there's sitcoms going around, but when it comes to movies, you are very hard pressed to find a comedy hit the big screen these days. So I thought it would be fun to take a look back on some of my favorite comedies of all time. Here's a forewarning. This list was very hard to do. I had to make some tough sacrifices, but my criteria was basically how many times I watched it, how quotable it is for me, and just what movies made me laugh, genuinely laugh the most. But that's why I enlisted the help of patrons and YouTube join members. We're gonna be sprinkling in some of their favorites as this list goes on. Let's not waste any more time. Here are my top 10 comedies. Let's begin. Shocked? Yeah, you should be. It's an unconventional pick. Some say I have an unconventional channel. But here we are. You're watching, I'm telling. First off, Emperor's New Groove is the only animated comedy on this list. Secondly, criminally underrated, underappreciated. David Spade takes lead here as the ultra douchebag Emperor Cusco. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a good cross country road trip adventure. This one doesn't disappoint. He and his buddy Pancha, played by John Goodman, will be frenemies throughout this film, constantly at odds with each other, mainly because Pancha's helping Emperor Cusco get back to his palace just so that he can turn around and destroy Pancha's land and put a pool on there for himself. These guys get themselves in some pretty precarious situations, but the villains are not slouches either. Eartha Kitt and Patrick Warburton play great foils for our heroes to go up against. Yzma and Kronk are up there as far as villains are concerned. It's hard to beat these two. People slept on this film and I can see why. The marketing was atrocious. It was Disney, so it already kind of screamed family friendly. And even though it very much is, all ages can appreciate this humor, it's the adults that are gonna get a little extra. Just because of the biting, snipping comedy that these two throw at each other. Plus there's the hilarious backdrops where the animators are in on their own joke of just not even trying. You have full backdrops that are nothing more than fish wallpaper. Unfortunately, this film didn't help Disney in any way, shape or form. It's kind of a stain on the company. It didn't make money. And in fact, it's probably one of the reasons they stopped doing uh, traditional animation altogether. I love it. But why male models? Derek Zoolander innocently asks a one-handed David Duchovny in the middle of a cemetery as he's pouring out the details of an intricate plan where models are being brainwashed to do assassination missions. In this particular instance, to kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia, the plot is insanely dumb, as is the rest of the film. And I love it. I love it all. I love triple threat Ben Stiller when he's writing, directing, and acting. Zoolander's one of those examples. He's so perfect as the five-syllabled male model Derek Zoolander. Equally as hilarious as Owen Wilson as Hansel. He's so hot right now. Hansel. And this is another example where a villain really elevates the humor for me. You have Will Ferrell as Mugatu. He's so good. Seeing this guy freak out while wearing the dumbest outfits imaginable, yet still somehow being the most sane person in the room half the time, is really priceless stuff. And this is one of those movies where if you blink, you'll miss a celebrity or five. There are so many cameos in there, it's hard to even keep track of them all. And it goes without saying with all the movies on this list, but man, it's got quotes. It's got a lot of quotes. I invented the piano key necktie! I invented it! And what did Derek Zoolander do? Nothing! He did nothing! And thankfully, this is a self-contained comedy, one and done, that definitely didn't have a sequel come out years and years later and ruin the goodwill of the first. There's no sequel! If you look up the definition of 1980s comedy, Ferris Bueller is there, front and center. This John Hughes vehicle is peak. 80s. Matthew Broderick is so damn charming and lovable as this, as the kid that just doesn't want to go to school. He's a high school student that's done, and everybody loves him for it. His parents are naive, his friends worship him, and the only people that know he's full of shit are the principal and his sister, which leads to comedy gold as the movie progresses. This movie's respected across the board. People have parodied it, tried to mimic the comedy styles. Hell, even Spider-Man Homecoming had a section that was a complete tip of the hat to this. And what else haven't I mentioned yet? Oh yeah, that song. Boom, boom, yeah. Ch -ch 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 Oop. 
boom, boom. Yeah. Um, boom, boom. Damn it, I did too good of a job impersonating that song. I'm probably gonna get a copyright flag. It's worth it. Fat guy in a little coat. Another film with endless quotable lines. It pains me that we didn't get more with this comedy duo. Granted, we got a good amount between SNL, Black Sheep, and this, but still, David Spade, Chris Farley, they deserve to go on to do much more together. Think Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon, grumpy old men, another hilarious comedy. Chris Farley tries to sell brake pads to a guy by taking his toy car, starting it on fire, and doing a bunch of voices. I just, I laugh thinking about it. Or how about the part where he gets hit in the face with a 2x4 and it hurts really bad. Not so much here, or here, but right in this region. Definitely took some inspiration from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Another golden comedy. Speaking of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Jake Jones does in fact have that as his favorite comedy. He says, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is my top pick. It's both hilarious and heartfelt with some genuinely touching moments. Both Candy and Martin knock it out of the park with their roles. It's just a perfect family film. The thing that separates Tommy Boy from the others on my list so far is it's not just a comedy, it's, it's a dramedy at times. Chris Farley really brings out the emotion. When his dad dies, he's out in the boat, just reflecting. The, the movie slows down. It, it goes quiet for a little bit. It gives the movie weight and some stakes to what Tommy Boy is trying to accomplish. And by the end of it, old Tommy Callahan finds a way to be a great salesman like his dad. Hell, I think by the end he was able to sell ketchup popsicle to a person in white gloves. Man, I miss John Hughes. He, he, he delivered such great comedies that the whole family could appreciate. Even if the material was a little darker and more mature, he still found a way to lighten things up enough, but not, but not make fun of it by any means. Uncle Buck isn't what I would consider the most upstanding citizen. He, he swears, he drinks, he gambles all his money away. He really has no prospects. But he's also loyal, compassionate, friendly, Lovable, and you just want to give the guy a big hug. I just realized I have Chris Farley and John Candy back to back on my list, and that hurts. These two comedy legends went way too soon. The other big star in this is, of course, Macaulay Culkin, perfect as always. But all three kids really bring a lot to the table. Whether it's the innocent, cute young niece, or the eldest that's uh, got a chip on her shoulder and is, is doing everything she can to piss her mom off. She's made some bad choices in the boyfriend department. You're not a gnat, are you, Bug? Uncle Buck might not be the most resourceful individual, but he always finds a way to get things done, whether it's vacuuming cereal off your own shirt, ramming the goddamn washing machine until it starts working, punching an inebriated clown's lights out so he doesn't ruin your nephew's birthday party, or taking out your four iron and whacking golf balls at the douchebag boyfriend who's on the run. This movie's got everything. Cable guy just wants to hang out. No big deal. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm sorry for the obnoxious way I said that, but that's how Chip Douglas talks. Not his real name, just one of his many aliases. Alias I? Alias C? I think aliases, that's a word. We're gonna make it one. Wow, I just realized Matthew Broderick is on my top 10 comedies list twice. These may genuinely be his only two good movies. The guy just fell off completely. He went from Ferris Bueller to just becoming an old dad overnight. It's so bizarre. But man, what a waste! He's more disappointing than Gerard Butler's career after 300. We had high hopes for you, buddy! Anyway, this is another Ben Stiller vehicle. He wrote, directed, and didn't star this time. He's actually just a background character. He plays Stan Sweet. There's a trial ongoing throughout, typically in the background on a TV. And the way that it plays out by the end is pretty damn funny. But we also have Leslie Mann in this, Owen Wilson, Jack Black, David Cross, Bob Odenkirk, the late George Siegel, Janine Garofalo, Kathy Griffin. There's a ton of comedians in this. But try as they might, no one holds a candle to the performance Jim Carrey's giving as this twisted, dark individual that just really wants a friend, a close friend, to make up the hole missing in his heart from his terrible upbringing. The premise of this is a little dated. It's about a cable guy who shows up at your house to install said cable and you can tip him and he'll, he'll give you some of the extra channels for free. A lot of people don't have cable anymore, but set that aside. 
Everyone knows someone that's a little too clingy, wants to get up in your grill, up in your personal space, invites them to every event you have, sets up parties at your place without your knowledge because he gave you a bunch of free shit and he wants to check out that brand new karaoke machine and see how it works. And of course we have that friend that hires you a prostitute that he himself checked out the night before. If Emperor's New Groove wasn't to turn off for you on this list, Cable Guy might be. I understand it's not for everyone. It didn't do that well in the box office, all things considered. It was also polarizing for a lot of fans who expected the Ace Ventura Jim Carrey, the Dumb and Dumber Jim Carrey, the literally any other role Jim Carrey. But what people don't understand is Jim Carrey is fucking versatile. The guy can do a multitude of different roles and absolutely convince you he's someone else. He is truly not just a great comedian, he is a great actor. And he pulls out all the stops here. Ben Stiller encouraged him to be creative, to ad-lib, to freestyle. You see it throughout the film, whether he's doing a Wrath of Khan impersonation or he's quoting a line from Waterworld that wasn't actually in the film. And I will say this, if you've never seen Cable Guy, go in with an open mind because the first time I watched it, I didn't think much of it because I was expecting that Ventura character or something zany and off the wall. This is dry, this is dark humor, and it works so well. So watch it twice, and then continue to watch it like 30 more times as I have. You won't regret it. Or you will. I, I don't care, this is my list. Let's continue. Can I, can I show you something? The details of Austin Powers are quite inconsequential. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Evil! Everybody knows him, everybody loves him. I don't wanna meet a person that doesn't think freaking Mike Myers is hilarious as that character. Austin Powers himself, eh, he's fine too. He's got some moments, especially when debating about whether or not he owns a Swedish made penis enlarger or a book. Swedish made penis enlargers and me. This sort of thing is my bag, baby. Bye. Austin Powers. This is a 007 parody done right. Yeah, it takes a lot of inspiration and pokes some fun at the characters in that franchise, but it's its own unique thing. I don't think a lot of people look back on Austin Powers and say, that's a great 007 parody. They just think it's a great comedy on its own. And that's a parody done right. When you can take the international man of mystery concept, some of the zany villains from those franchises and make them your own. It's also one of the rare comedies that sequel is just as good as the original. Spy Who Shagged Me's got Fat Bastard. It's got Mini Me. It's hard not to appreciate what's going on in these movies. Times they haven't changed. In the last 20 years or so, I've developed a strict no Adam Sandler policy. Yet Happy Gilmore is at the number three spot on my list. Why? Because Adam Sandler honed his craft in this film and pulled out all the stops. Happy Gilmore is so good from top to bottom. You'll notice an easy pattern on my top 10 comedies list. First, they're not highbrow movies by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but two, the villains, man. We got Shooter McGavin here. We got Ben Stiller in this too. Check out the tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Adam Sandler as Happy Gilmore is rage fused into a bottle and at any moment it can explode and it does constantly. Watching Adam Sandler make a mockery of golf will never get old. We see him kick the shit out of an alligator, get his ass handed to him by Bob Barker, bust the head of a clown on a mini golf course, spew profanity for like two minutes straight as the censor tries to keep up with everything he's saying. We take joy when he hits a hole in one or when he's doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it. It's circular. I know Bob Barker is going to disagree, but when it comes to Happy Gilmore, the price is right. Bitch. I started this out by saying it's very hard to find a good comedy film these days. They just don't make them really like they used to. They basically are the westerns of, of modern cinema. What's even more scarce are satirical parody films. And a lot of that's because it was ruined by a couple of hacks who made the insert title movie franchise. Epic movie, not another teen movie, disaster movie, scary movie. The first scary movie's fine. They made like five of them, I think. They, they just got worse and worse. Before parody movies turned to shit though, Leslie Nielsen was killing it in these roles. Wrongfully accused, spy hard, and of course the Naked Gun franchise. 
Leslie Nielsen plays Frank Drebin, an incompetent police officer who manages to land on his feet when things are all said and done. Not literally, he falls constantly. The situations he gets in are so absurd. There's tons of movies being satirized in this, and on top of it all, some of the dialogue is funny as hell. Priscilla Presley bounces dialogue off of Leslie Nielsen so well, they work great together. And also, O.J. Simpson is in this. So that's... So that's something, too. Regardless, the Naked Gun movies are absolutely worth watching. Especially if you like films like Airplane, Spaceballs, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, all of them I consider phenomenal comedy. And I can't forget about Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part 2. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, the number one spot should come as no surprise. Dumb and Dumber. I'm a simple man. I like the simple pleasures life brings. One such thing is Dumb and Dumber. Two comedy legends on display. Wait, no, just really one. Just Jim Carrey. For some reason, Jeff Daniels is in this, and he kills it. He kills it in this role. A guy that normally plays serious roles freaking dominates it. He had a much smaller paycheck, too, when compared to Jim Carrey, but it was worth it, damn it. This is another one where it's also in the title. Harry and Lloyd are some of the stupidest ignorant people on the planet. They're friends, but they're also the worst friends ever. They take each other's girlfriends. They wear two pairs of gloves while the other has none. They make terrible decisions that harms the other, either financially or physically. And yet these two share a bond like no other because they're both such dipshits. They understand the in and outs of each other's brains or lack thereof. Even things that aren't clever or witty became quotable. YouTube Join member Johnny Sillers can attest. He says, when I asked my then-to-be wife on our first date what her favorite movie was, she simply responded with, big gulps, huh? All right, see you later. Dumb and Dumber will forever be my number one. I just thought he was quiet, the little boy says as he pets the dead parakeet. No way! Man walks on the moon? We did it! Mock, yeah! Ian, yeah. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <coughs> Those skis yours? Both of them? Everything in this movie is quote. I've seen this movie a stupid amount of times. I could quote it from beginning to end almost. It's both impressive and incredibly sad. Probably just probably just the latter. Kick his ass, sea bass. Give me that, you little pumpkin pie haircutted freak. Plus, there's the beautiful Shagan wagon they drive around. A bizarre soundtrack featuring not one, but two Crash Test Dummy songs. Impeccable fashion sense that people still dress up as for Halloween every year. And situational humor rivaled by none other. That's Dumb and Dumber. That's my number one spot. Here's what a couple more patron and YouTube join members have as their number one pick. Daniel E. Pissarro says... Better have Caddyshack on that list, boyo. I apologize from the bottom of my dick. I don't, but I did call it out very early on. It is, it is a phenomenal movie. I apologize. I'm sorry. Orgboy1992 says, The Jerk with Steve Martin. He's a comedic genius, and it's such a fantastic and hilarious movie with so many great lines. Justin Golding picks Super Troopers. The opening scene is the best ever. I'm hearing you on Super Troopers, I place that right next to Office Space. Both movies have such terrific first halves that when the plot finally starts to kick in, I do think it wavers a little bit. The, the comedy starts to take a backseat to the unconventional plots. And uh, that's a shame because man, those first halves, hoo -hoo, that's good stuff. Well, there you have it. A top 10 comedy list like no other. Let me know if you agree with some of these or all of them. That would be amazing. Like the video if you had a good time. Let me know your top 10 in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here or you just forgot to in the past. Hit the notification bell and these videos will show up guaranteed in your feed. And hopefully, I'll see you in the future, Mr. Powers. Thanks again for watching the video, and if you'd like to be featured in a future episode where I do these top 10 picks, become a patron or YouTube join member. I'm on Patreon at Adam Does Movies, or you can join via the button right here on the page, and that'll get you started. Otherwise, just continue being an awesome subscriber and sharing the show with your friends and family, maybe tweeting it out once in a while, that couldn't hurt, and I'd love to see you around.